in the heart of Kenya a dedicated group of researchers at the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, are pioneering a remarkable journey to address the pressing challenges of climate change in the poultry industry. We uncover their efforts to empower farmers through innovative solutions and improved chicken breeds. In Kenya, the impact of climate change is simply evident. Unpredictable weather patterns cast uncertainty over countless farmers' lives. Prolonged droughts, erratic rainfall, and soaring temperatures have transformed the landscape into a formidable challenge for livestock. For climate change within the context of this country, we have seen increased droughts in terms of uh, the return time of drought, five years to around three and a half years, sometimes even three years. In some instances, we have seen, we have received enhanced rainfall and causes floods. Uh, we, of course, with a lot of challenges in the, in the ecosystem. We have seen increased temperatures, sometimes some regions, heat waves, and there also a lot of gust, you know, increased, uh, increased winds, usually in northern part of the country. And all these have impacts on my ecosystem and also on, on our livelihoods within, within this region. Over the years, we have seen seasonal shifts, in terms of shifting seasons. Eh? We expect rains to come in March. Most of the time, the rain comes in June, July. The zone can be short, sometimes elongated. For example, right now in Western Kenya, we're supposed to be harvesting in August. But we'll have a lot of rain, so we have a negative trade-offs in terms of our crop, crop harvest. Calro, a venerable research institution, stands at the forefront of this battle. Guided by a vision of excellence in agricultural and livestock research for transformed livelihoods, they have embraced the challenge head-on. Their diverse team has embarked on a journey to engineer improved chicken breeds that can thrive in this ever-changing climate. One of the interventions which we have come up with is to develop a breed which is more resilient to the changes in the climatic conditions in the field. And uh, the bird can uh, fit in all agroecological zones in the Republic of Kenya. The bird, if you compare to our indigenous chicken, which can give you around uh, 50, 80 to 100 eggs in a year. The improvement which has been made in the caldro chicken will make it give you between 250 to 280 eggs per year. The growth rate has also been enhanced such that instead of waiting for a whole eight months before in pure indigenous chicken matures, the Calro improved chicken, we call it KC, and we have two breeds, the KC1 and the KC2. They will be mature in around five months. For the cocks, within four months, they have attained market weight of uh, over 2 kg, 2.5, at four months. So at that time, you can sell them and then you get the farmer will get the cash. Again, in terms of the egg size, the local chicken, the, the indigenous, the egg, in terms of weight, you get is around 30 to 40 grams. But this KC1 and KC2 from Calro, the eggs, in terms of weight, you will get around 50, 65 grams. Then, another thing is when it comes to feeding. The most expensive part of an enterprise of chicken is the feeds. And this one will consume between 60 to 70% of the total cost of production. And in the feeds again, protein is the most again expensive part of it. And the protein part of it, we normally compete with the, with the human beings because you need the fish meal. So the fish, the human beings will consume it. You also need it for the, 
for the chicken uh, as ingredients to compound the feeds. We need the soil. Human beings want to use it. We want to use it for the chicken feeds. So the intervention which we have come up with is to address uh, the challenge by using you know, the unconventional sources of, uh, of feeds like uh, the, the insect-based feeds, which we shall not now compete with the human beings, like the black soldier fly, we are using it for the, for, the, uh, for the chicken feeds. And again, we are using the plant-based, like the moringa. So these interventions will help us. You, intro, you reduce the amount of uh, animal protein when you use the black soja fly. So the, actually the black soja fly, you can reduce the fish meal up to 50%. So you just remove the fish meal, use your black soja fly, still compound very good quality feed, which will uh, reduce even the cost of production. <laughs> I did particularly with the, the lab work aspect of it. So just to, you know, climate change has brought about um, adverse effects with regards to um, new diseases or increased diseases um, in Kenya. So what you're trying to do is that we're trying to put in measures to curb um, the resistance of these um, infections. Number one is that there's a uh, Newcastle. So what we are doing with the Newcastle is that we are vaccinating day old birds um, they won, so we vaccinate them. Then after a couple of days, seven days, we look at the uh, immunological responses um, towards this vaccine. And so we determine the, the titers. So the ones that has high titers is the one that we use for our breeding program moving forward. Uh, out of that, we have managed to um, have a robust vaccination program so that we can have the birds um, be resilient as as uh, to be adapted to all uh, environmental conditions. What we have managed to achieve is that out of that, we have managed to reduce the cases that is happening in the field. Because once we have uh, vaccinated at day one, we also administer boosters um, at the long run. So once the farmers have these chicks, the, the chicks will be adapted and will not be highly uh, susceptible to this uh, infection. Driven by collaboration and expertise from diverse fields, Caldro's research bridges the gap between cutting-edge science and practical solutions for the field. For instance, we are advocating to encourage behavioral changes in uh, the communities involved. And one of the behavior changes we are advocating for is uh, consumption of eggs in uh, more increased numbers, more so for children below the age of five years. And uh, uh, in this intervention, uh, breeding organizations, one of them being Calro, amongst other international breeding farms, which we link farmers to. And it's not just about linking farmers and smallholder producers with genetic material, but also linking them to service provision, to enable proper husbandry, vaccination, feed supplies, and all this put together. Another intervention which is very pivotal to the Tropical Pole to Genetic Solution Program is the mothering units. As you notice, most smallholder farmers will produce chicks and uh, brood them for a while, but then the mortality levels have been very high. For instance, almost 50% of the chicks die during the brooding stage and the brooding stage is uh, the first few weeks maybe one one to six weeks or four weeks thereabout so in the mothering unit model we are identifying farmers with uh, a little financial stamina and, and these farmers will brood uh, up to maybe one to five thousand chicks and in the mothering units because uh, this farmer has got quite a bit of economic stamina is able to provide the, the, the right conditions, to give the right vaccinations, to provide the heating structure and infrastructure that are needed for optimum production of chicks. And then the mothering unit, once the chicks have reached the age where they can be distributed to the smallholder farmers, then the smallholder farmer can buy 20 chicks, 10 chicks or 30 chicks. 
out of this model, we have documented a reduction in mortality of chicks from 50% to 5%. And out of this intervention, we are uh, finding farmers are able to produce more chicken for egg production, for meat production, and also it's helping us meet the first objective which I mentioned, which is nutrition availability in terms of eggs and also in terms of meat in the households. Through meticulous testing and meticulous breeding, Carlos researchers have achieved a breakthrough. A new generation of climate resilient chicken breeds is emerging poised to weather the challenges. So far, Carlos has been conserving indigenous chicken and we have like 5,000 live birds uh, in this farm. And uh, we, for the indigenous chicken, we find that the conservation bit, uh, we get that uh, the genetics have been diluted by having other exotic chicken being introduced. And also, they, they also conserve the sperm, which is uh, the freezing and thawing, uh, makes the sperm less viable in terms of introduction to the chicken. And now we've introduced a new technology called the primordial germ cell technology. In this technology, um, we have uh, the cells that are being isolated in different embryonic stages. So we get a fertilized egg from the chicken we want to conserve and then we incubate. For the farmers, they have those breeds that they really, really want to conserve. So we, get, we go to them, we get the fertilized eggs uh, from them or the chicken themselves and then we come and conserve them. The moment they want the chicken back, we can retrieve them for them. Apart from that, uh, we have introduced a manual, because this is an experience that's still ongoing, on, the, on how to uh, conserve the PGCs at uh, different embryonic tissues. And also we are training other uh, places, other regions within Africa or to conserve their genetics. So we have Uganda, where we have the East Africa, where we do our training. We have in the South, we have also Southeast Asia is under the TPGS uh, program that we can talk about. And we also have uh, uh, Central Africa, where we shall also do this work. Carl Rose's influence goes beyond research. Their workshops and training sessions offer valuable insights and best practices to empower farmers. Literally, we have reached more than 40 43 counties out of the total 47 counties in Kenya. Uh, for the last six years, we've reached, we've uh, distributed more than 3.7 million chicken to the households all over the country. We have reached uh, more than 150, more than one, uh, 350 households and more than 2.2 million people that have reached have been reached with, with the Calro Improved Indigenous Chicken. So this has been made possible with the, uh, with the help of the collaborators. For example, we have the collaboration with the county gov governments, we have the collaboration with the universities, we have the collaboration with the other international uh, organizations such as FAO and also other institutions like the, the we have a collaboration with the NGOs also. So all these have we have partnered with all these people to be able to ensure that we disseminate the technologies that we have, the, the technologies that we've de developed to reach all over the country. So we also reach out to our farmers, especially at the small scale farmers and the even the large large scale farmers and uh, the other individuals through various platforms such as social media platforms such as uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, we have YouTube channels that we can put, reach them through and also the other channels like LinkedIn. From Caldo's research landscapes to farms across Kenya, the spirit of resilience spreads its wings, carrying with it the promise of a brighter, sustainable tomorrow.